Welcome to Genuine Life Recovery. We're here to help you and your loved ones overcome addictions and other addiction-related mental health challenges. In this show, we dive into the physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual aspects of addiction, mental health, recovery, family dynamics, codependency, and more. You can listen on your favorite app or at jodystevens.org. Genuine Life Recovery is made possible by great friends like Joshua's Heart in memory of Joshua Brent Moore, bringing hope, love, and awareness to those afflicted by addiction online at joshsheart.org and Jody Stevens Productions for commercial voiceover, narration, production, MC, and public speaking online at jodystevens.org. Hey friends, welcome back to Genuine Life Recovery. This is Gratitude, a path to healing and liberation in recovery and in the recovery journey. So gratitude is what we are talking about today. One of my favorite subjects because honestly, gratitude saved my life in recovery in so many ways. So I totally want to talk about that. I'm Jody Stevens. First, I'd love to start just by thinking about what, what are some things you're grateful for? Maybe think about five things that you are grateful for and see if it doesn't make you feel better. So I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for our home. I'm grateful for our cars. I'm grateful that we have food to eat. I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for, well, that was over, that was five. <laughs> I'm grateful for having uh, 17 years. No, is it 18 years? I'm grateful that I lose track of the amount of time that I've had sober. So, you know, I mean, so many things to, to be grateful for. Sometimes it's easy to lose sight of it when we're struggling when we're stuck in traffic, when we get a bad diagnosis, when heartache comes, when we're betrayed. That's not to say that we're just supposed to jump for joy in those times. I certainly know I didn't, but gratitude is a, it, it's a life-saving thing when it comes to recovery. And that's what we're gonna be talking about. And I wanna dig more into really what gratitude is. It's not this like, oh, I'm just so thankful and happy every day. And you know, it's not like that at all. It's kind of like surrender where it, it's a daily deal. It's something we keep working on, but it's more um, a way of living. It's more a way of uh, an attitude of the heart. It's not like just, holding hands around the table. It's a lot more than that. Certainly <laughs> holding hands around the table helps, but, uh, so I hope that makes sense. Let's dig into it. You know, the role of gratitude in the journey of recovery is huge because recovery and life, there's challenges, there's pain, there's uncertainty. So this, this gratitude, this outlook can serve as a guiding light. It can really, uh, help to, um, illuminate our path towards healing, towards restoration, towards hope. So whether you're recovering from addiction, trauma, any other adversity, practicing gratitude is a very transformative practice because it can change our perspective on life on a day-to-day -day basis. It can change our attitudes. It definitely can change our relationships, the type of relationships that we're in. So the number one cause of relapse is negative emotions, okay? So this is why gratitude is so huge because it can change the negative emotions into positive emotions. That's why it's in recovery, they have what's called protective factors, right? Family, if your family's supportive of you, um, 12 step groups are protective factors. So, you know, if you're in recovery and you're in a recovery program, they'll do an assessment. Like, what are the risk factors? If someone's homeless or living in a park or they're near a place where there's a lot of heroin, if there was trauma and abuse in their childhood, those are going to be risk factors. Protective factors are going to be supportive relationships, um, practicing gratitude, having a healthy support system, having a place to live, right? So you kind of look at those two things and you want to reduce the risk factors and increase the protective factors. So for a lot of people, gratitude is a huge protective factor. It was for me, I, I think that it saved my life. I mean, it really did. 
And gratitude is more than just expressing thankfulness. That's a little part of it. But like I said earlier, it's a profound attitude of the heart. So it's recognizing the blessings in our life, big, small, things that enrich our lives. We acknowledge the goodness that surrounds us, even in those trials, even in those tribulations. The Apostle Paul said, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So this, this gratitude, this thankfulness, of course, God knew all along that this was a protective factor because he also said in, in this world, you will have trouble. Take heart. I've overcome the world, right? Give, give thanks in all circumstances. So gratitude is, it's an invitation to shift our focus from what we lack to what we have, but also the lessons learned. You know, I can look at a betrayal as what did I learn through that, or I can seek revenge. Which one do you think is more likely to cause a relapse? Seeking revenge or praying to God, asking for him to help me forgive and learning through that betrayal of what not to do again, and then helping other people to spot those types of things too. See, <laughs> one's a good, one's the high road, right? Take the high road. That's what gratitude is, right? It's the high road. Um, and it can help us, you know, with all the, the frustrations. It can also help with entitlement. Oh, entitlement is a big, big cause of um, resentment, which can then lead us into those negative emotions and then lead us into relapse. And we all struggle with entitlement. I'm not talking about just what we see, obviously, in the world and in the whole political thing. Really, what, what I, I mean, I get this. I feel this way all the time. Like, God, I've worked so hard and I've done this almost like, you know, I should have a better job or I should be making for more money or you owe me this or you owe me that, you know, and those sorts of things. But then when I stop and I count my blessings and I think about people that have nothing or people that live in third world countries that have no food to eat and, you know, stuff like that, when I reflect on the places I've been like Haiti. Yeah, that was hell on earth, Guatemala, places where people are starving. It just, it, it brings back that perspective of like, nobody owes me anything, nothing. God saved me and he owes me nothing, right? And, and I think that's where that, that gratitude comes from when we can kind of wake up every day and say, I don't have anybody to blame. <laughs> I got no one left to blame and I'm grateful for everything you've done for me, Lord. And, and, and if this was it, if this was all you ever did for me, I would be okay. You know? And again, it's, <laughs> we don't do that every day. It's the angel and the demon, you know, it's a daily deal. You know, I was stuck in traffic and I was so mad. I was cussing. Yeah. I mean, all of it. And, you know, I kept, I kept going back to the gratitude and the thankfulness and then I wasn't moving. And then I started, you know, cause I had to go to the bathroom and I was hungry and I couldn't get out of this mess and you know how it is. And so it was just back and forth, back and forth. But here's the deal. I never stopped getting frustrated, right? It just didn't happen. But once I got home, I let it go. I said, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm just, it's okay. I'm home now. I'm gonna make dinner. Life is good. No big deal. So sometimes the gratitude comes <laughs> a little bit later. I love what Viktor Frankl wrote. He's the concentration camp survivor. Um, he, he was pretty instrumental in helping the therapeutic environment incorporate this idea of meaning and purpose, which really incorporates gratitude. Um, he wrote that book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning. But he says, uh, he says, the one thing you can't take away from me is the way I choose to respond to what you do to me. The last of one's freedoms is to choose one's attitude in, in any given circumstance. Happiness can't be pursued. It must ensue. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. And I would add gratitude on that as well. 
right? We start to look for meaning and purpose in things and lessons learned. And that's where the gratitude comes in. That's kind of all part of of how that works, you know. And again, like I said, negative emotions are the number one cause uh, uh, of relapse. And so this is where part of recovery is looking up to God, right? We say, we say, step one admitted we were powerless over our addictions. Our life had become unmanageable, admitted that a power greater than ourselves, God, could restore us to sanity. Because I think that we're not naturally wired to be super grateful all the time, right? But I think that with God, he's the one that changes our heart, right? Renew in me a, a new heart, God, a steadfast spirit. I think I said that backwards, but, you know, basically he's the one that changes our heart, that aligns our will with his will. And part of that is practicing gratitude, right? Giving thanks in all things, right? Paul said, I'm content whether hungry or thirsty or in prison or, you know what I mean? That doesn't mean, you know, that he was happy all the time, right? He probably, you know, he probably had to work on it too, just like we do, you know? But here's the thing, and I've known many people in recovery, and I've shared this many times, that my brother died of his addiction. And I would see when he was about to relapse People would say, like my mom would say, oh, he's doing really good. But I would see the lack of gratitude and that resentment coming in. And it was a ticking time bomb. And I could see it. And I knew, I knew that he was headed for a relapse simply because of the lack of gratitude, which then brings in resentment and entitlement. And you start to just hate everything around you. And if you're in recovery and you start to see yourself like that, then you need to get help. You need to get into therapy. You need to get into a group. You know, you need to do something about that because that lack of gratitude and when that lack of gratitude and that resentment starts to set in, you're headed for relapse, friends. That's how it works. Um, that doesn't mean it's always going to happen. There are dry drunks. <laughs> People that are just angry all the time, they don't drink, they don't use, they're just angry. We call them dry drunks. They're almost like better off drunk. Not really, but you know, like they're so difficult. So that's why we always talk about getting to the root of things and, and digging in and dealing with emotions and stuff like that. Because when we're sober, we want to be happy, happy, joyous, and free, not miserable. Right. And so part of that is incorporating gratitude. And again, it's, it's, it's a heart change. Obviously, the journey of recovery is fraught with challenges, physical challenges, emotional challenges, you know, spiritual challenges, especially for new people that don't know the Lord, that are trying to figure out this spiritual thing, because it is a spiritual journey, you know, and an addiction, whether it's to substances, behaviors, it can really consume our lives. It can leave us broken. It can leave us in despair right? A lot of times it's a battle <laughs> against our self-will, which is why we're like, God, your will be done. Because with my self-will, when I try to run my life, um, right, this is how it turned out for me, addiction, despair, and anger, and rage, and and, and anxiety, and, and panic attacks, and uncontrollable emotions. That is um, where my will took me. And then when I surrendered to God, I started to unravel all this stuff. Took years, you know, and then probably hmm, 10 years into my recovery is when I started to incorporate this concept of gratitude. I don't know when it started. I can't remember. I think it had something to do with that man's search for meaning. And, you know, I was doing radio for a Christian music station, The Fish in Sacramento. And so... A lot of the stuff we talked about with God and, and gratitude and, and positive things like that. And as I started to learn more and more about the power of gratitude, I started to incorporate it into my life and slowly I became less miserable. I became happier. I started to uncover my issues with codependency. I started to see the problems that I was causing because I was, the gratitude helped me to, to look at 
my part in things because I wasn't blaming other people. And I began to see where I had gone wrong and the ways that I needed to fix my life. And so, you know, just, just that starting of gratitude and then learning the lessons and asking God to show me the lessons through um, all of these things and then being thankful. And then as I would practice gratitude, I would start to, um, I think one of the first things that I did was I used to have these, this super negative attitude. You know, I was like, the glass isn't half empty. There's just nothing in it. <laughs> like I was really bad. I would say I'm probably somewhere in the middle now. <laughs> you know, I would say the gratitude took me, took me, but like I was, I had a pretty, pretty negative attitude. And so the gratitude really helped me. And it started when, you know, I would have, I would have something happen and I would say, oh, it's going to be one of those days. And then I started to stop myself because I did that a lot. And I was like, no, no, it's not going to be one of those days. Maybe it started out that way, but it's going to get a lot better. Nine times out of 10, it would. And that's kind of where it started. And so I just started doing that constantly. It didn't happen overnight. It took years and years and years. And pretty soon though, my life started to change. There was more peace, happiness, all those sorts of things, right? Gratitude has healing power, helps us live longer, right? We're happier. We have better relationships. I mean, everything's better and we get to choose. It's that choice, just like Viktor Frankl. Other people around him were dying. And he said, no, I'm going to choose how I respond to this. And it was his response of finding meaning and purpose in what was happening and being grateful for the little, you know, that he was even still alive. And that was what ultimately saved his life. There's healing physical power in gratitude, just like there is in prayer, just like there is when we call on the Lord, right? What's the thing? Um, you are never, you're never helpless. We can be powerless. We're often powerless. But with God, we're never helpless. Powerless over addiction, yes. Helpless, never. Because he can help us. So this gratitude, it can soothe our wounds. It helps with anxiety, huge. I mean, this is really what helped me to get past, you know, I still have a lot of anxiety. I don't have panic attacks anymore. So it really took things down several notches. Again, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to fix everything, but it's certainly going to make your life a lot better. Um, so huge for anxiety. Um, the psalmist said, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful need, your wonderful uh, deeds. So when we we cultivate this gratitude, it can shift our focus from despair to 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 possibility. We start to see the beauty around us. We start to think about the things that we are grateful for. Right, whatever it is for you, skiing. <laughs> I'm so happy when I'm skiing. I mean, how can you not be? Or we have a, a hot tub. You know, when you're sitting in a hot tub, how can you be depressed? Like, it's just like impossible. You know? I mean, just all the little gifts, you know, the gifts that we have, you know, just thinking about those things, it makes me, it makes me feel good, you know? And, and again, like I said, slowly, that is what, what creeped in and started to, to save my life. And when we're in recovery groups and things like that, and we, we share our experiences and our strength and our hope, you know, and we see other people that are, you know, really worse off than us, um, and we begin to help them, and 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 they begin to see the light. It's it's huge. I mean, you know, and we're able to sort of spread this gratitude to other people. So gratitude, it's not this passive thing. You know, it's it's a it's a force, and it propels us to action. As we start experiencing gratitude, we start to live out of that compassion, out of generosity, out of service. You know, the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous said, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. 
so true. It turns denial into acceptance, right? Acceptance is the key to all my problems today. When I am disturbed, it is because I find some person, place, thing, or situation, some fact of my life unacceptable to me, and I can find no peace and no serenity until I accept that Thing, that person, place, or thing is exactly the way it is meant to be. Nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Until I could accept my addiction, I could not be happy. Acceptance is the key. Anyway, it says gratitude unlocks the fullness of life, turns what we have into enough and more, turns denial into acceptance, like I said, chaos into order, and confusion into clarity. Gratitude makes sense of our past brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. One of the biggest obstacles to recovery is resentment and bitterness. It's the refusal to let go of the past, the hurts, the grievances. I could never forgive them, you know. But gratitude has the power to dissolve that resentment and cultivate forgiveness. One of the things that they say in recovery is resentment is the number one killer. And I think it even says that in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, resentment is the number one killer. Because again, those negative emotions, as it starts to fester and fester and fester, now I'm resentful. Now I'm entitled. Now I'm going to drink. Now I'm going to use. Now I'm going to eat. Now I'm going to gamble. Resentment. So when we choose to focus on blessings and we release that grip of bitterness and resentment, it can open our hearts to healing, reconciliation, maybe. Corey Ten Boom, another person in a concentration camp, she said, every experience God gives us, every person he puts in our lives is the perfect preparation for the future that only he can see. So again, trusting in God's plan. What does all this mean, God? There's a bigger purpose. Thank you. So in recovery, you know, it's, it's, it's living day to day, right? It's one day at a time where we embrace the gift of each day. We live in the moment. We try to live in the moment. I know it's hard to not think about the future and the past. And I, we all do it all the time, but it's to stop ourselves and try as much as we can to live in the moment. Right. What's that whole saying about we rob ourselves of of today because we're thinking about tomorrow, that type of a thing. I mean, it's so true, you know, and then all the things we're all upset about usually don't even happen. So if we can live in the moment, it's going to help so much to. Um, you know, make the next day better, because, again, most of those things we worry about, sometimes they happen, but a lot of times they don't. So. Just being grateful in each moment can help us do that. You know, gratitude invites us to savor those simple joys in life, whatever that is for you. The sunset, the sunrise, nature, prayer, a great scripture, practicing gratitude. You know, it reminds us also, gratitude also reminds us of how important, um, you know, community and fellowship is kindred spirits where we we walk alongside each other in this journey of recovery. Henry Nowen says gratitude flows from the recognition that who we are and what we have are gifts to be received and shared. You have many gifts when you share them. That's the process of living out that gratitude, right? Um, sharing our stories, our struggles, our triumph with others, offering support, encouragement to one another. It's huge. That's all part of this gratitude process when together we discover the transformative power of gratitude, the power that can heal us, uh, restore us, renew us, right? It's, it's, it's Gratitude is not just a feeling. It's more than a feeling, <laughs> as the Boston song goes, right? It's, it's a way of life. It's a daily practice it's where we open our hearts to the countless blessings that surround us, even in this midst of adversity. That heart change, we cultivate gratitude in our lives, understanding that it has the power to transform the sorrows to joy, the wounds into healing, that despair into hope as we, as we become 
a vessel, really a vessel of gratitude. And we share those blessings with others and spread the, the hope that we all need. Right? Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So that, friends, is the transformative power of gratitude. And I hope that you will begin to incorporate it into your life and you will be amazed at how much it can transform your life. So thank you so much, um, friends, for listening. If you know anyone that could benefit from this program, please share it. Genuine Life Recovery, it's available on your favorite app, iTunes and uh, Spotify and tune in and also playing on my website, which is jodystevens.org, J-O-D-I-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S, jodystevens.org. And thank you so much, friends, for listening. God bless you. Thank you so much, friends, for listening to Genuine Life Recovery, playing on your favorite app or on my website at jodystevens.org. It's J-O-D-I-E-S-T-E-V-E-N-S, jodystevens.org. There you can check out my podcast, blog, recovery coaching info, speaking, and more. Check it out.